What's up guys, welcome to A Resource Life. My name is Chris, thank you so much for joining me. In today's episode, I'm gonna ask you guys, which would you prefer? Would you prefer a store with $75 average sale price times a thousand items? So this is the picker model. You're really good at finding stuff that's $25 or less and sells for $75 or more. You're the home run king or queen. You find stuff that's really valuable for really a low amount. So you have a thousand of those. Or are you more of a strategic liquidation buyer or bulk buyer, meaning you buy a whole lot of things that come in and you pick through there and you have 3,000 items in your store that are 25 or $30. This is a little bit easier on the sourcing end, meaning you could just press a button and buy from liquidation.com or a pallet, get that stuff to come in. And on the other model, it's more like 30 to 50 hours a week out there hunting. Maybe you're in the Nike outlet looking for those, those crazy cleats that are worth a lot of money. Maybe you're going from Ross to Ross to Ross or Marshalls to Marshalls to Marshalls, or maybe you are thrifting, but making sure you hit those reps and you're going to 20 to 40 stores per week. What would you rather be? Do you want to be the hunter where you spend most of your time shopping? Or do you want to be the process person who orders and figures out how to get rid of the stuff that's too low and sells the home runs and then most of your life is just these base hit $25, $30 items that you paid 10 or less for? Which model are you? Please smash the like button. Consider subscribing if you enjoy these types of topics and we'll see you guys in the show. So my name's Chris and I've been doing this for about three years now running an online store. I have about 5,000 items right now and I'm gonna scale to 10,000 items in my online store. And the truth is, I actually have both models in my store. Right now, I'm going to garage sales and thrift stores for fun on the weekends and trying to find those really high-end $75 or above items like this treadmill that I paid $200 for and just sold for $450 on eBay. Super psyched about that. This is one of those high-end items that requires a lot of time and a lot of research, but it's a lot less work. I only need to sell a few of these per day to meet a really high, great income. Right, versus selling generic items that are 25 to $30 that I pay 10 or $15 for is a grind. There's a lot of those coming in and coming out. But that being said, most of the stuff is pretty modular, meaning I don't have to be there to list it and I don't really need to be there to sort it either. I just order it, it comes in, somebody else lists it, somebody else ships it, and I just sit back. Now, again, it's not passive. I have to go into the store and actually make sure things are optimized. If stuff is sitting, I need to make sure that it, it gets out of the store because I have a limited amount of space. I can't just store things forever. And plus items that don't sell are just dead money. They're just wasting your time, your space, and more importantly, your mental real estate. Because if you have a bunch of junk in your store, it's really hard to wake up in the day and get to work versus if you have a store of only high-end stuff, the only problem your store can have is that it's too small. So two rules of thumb for the picker model. Number one, if you're a picker model and you're finding really high-end stuff, list it as soon as you get home. So that treadmill that I just sold, I listed it literally in the car while I was waiting for the, on a garage sale to open because that stuff is really expensive. It takes up a lot of space. You gotta get it to move. Expensive stuff sells fast, but it's harder to find. So remember, you're gonna be in that high churn expensive stuff, but most of your day is gonna be hunting in that model. Number two, this is always true. The more time and the more difficult and the more special and the more rare your item is, the less competition that there is. So if you have a hard, difficult, strategic sourcing life, you're gonna have an easy actual life, an easy reselling life because the items that you sell are not very competitive. Now, if you have an easy sourcing life, you just press a button or you go to the thrift store and you just fill your cart up. Anyone can do that. And that's why those stores have the slowest sell-through rate. You're competing against everyone. Don't compete with everyone. Don't compete, dominate. Look for really, really rare, cool items that only you can find. Obviously, that's easier said than done. That's why I recommend doing a little bit of both, actually. So you maybe you think of yourself as the hunter or maybe you think of yourself as the bulk person, just pressing a button and getting really, really efficient with your processes. What I recommend is you actually do both. I learned this from Eddie, Le Eddie Levine, I believe that's his name. He was saying that you build your business with replenishables, with multi-quantity items, with similar items, with these cheaper items. That's how you build your business. But you build your margin on these one-off, home-run, awesome items. Maybe you come in the fidget spinners right before the craze. You pay a penny for them and you sell each one for 10 bucks during the height of the peak. That's awesome, right? But that's gonna be something that's very short-lived and actually can get you into trouble if you don't get out early enough. So I recommend that you actually do both. Sell things that are really high end to make sure that that cash flow and those profit margins get a little bit of a bump, 
but you have to sell the basics because that's what most people are buying. Most people aren't buying rare, amazing, cool stuff. Most people are actually struggling right now. Think about the people that you know. Are they buying super rare stuff? Or are they just buying necessities right now? Make sure you focus on things that people actually use. One category that does super well for me is commercial fans. Commercial fans are very cool, very expensive. You find them everywhere. They're really useful and they look amazing in somebody's man cave. I came up on these beer signs, which is awesome. I don't think I'm gonna sell this one, Long Life Noodle Company, but it was cool. This um, vintage Budweiser Clydesdale sign is super cool. It is for sale on my eBay store, Daily Refinement, if you guys wanna check it out. Um, it's actually from... Uh, 1991, which is super cool. Um, but again, this person had a bunch of beer signs. Bacardi, uh, St. Paulina, uh, an Oakland A's game time sign, and a Modelo Especial sign, which actually somebody made an offer already, even though it's cracked in the corner. So make sure you guys accurately describe your items. Make sure you put the dimensions and you don't want to return, especially on something big like this. So just make sure that you really describe your items so that your customer can get the best feel that they can for it. Um, but I really think that this Budweiser sign is going to do okay. Maybe let me know in the comments section what you guys think it's worth. But this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about that's rare and harder to find. And I'm actually going for the bulky items right now because I know a lot of people don't have the space to store it, but I do. So let's do it. These mid-century modern chairs are really 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 awesome actually i was considering actually keeping them because they just look really cool but furniture is another category that a lot of resellers don't touch because they don't have the space so just look for ways to stand out from the crowd if you sell what everybody else sells you're gonna have a really hard time in this business now the opposite model is the bulk purchasing model this requires a lot of listing a lot of process and in my opinion it requires three total people so you need three people working on this business to make it work. Now, this is the beautiful part about it. If you can get these three people, which is a combination of a buyer, a lister, and a shipper, these are the three main people, one buyer, one shipper, one lister, you can actually take some time off. The problem with the picking model, this is the only problem with the picking model. If you're doing it for a living, when you take a break, your paycheck takes a break. And that's rough, especially, you know, if, if you don't have, a, you know, you haven't set aside money for retirement or you are relying only on this money, it's really tough. Whereas if you have a larger store that's bulk and people helping you, as long as they keep the habit of buying, listing, shipping, your business continues. It actually takes a lot of the weight off. Now, it takes longer to build that model. It's it's easier in my opinion to build a thousand items that are really quality if you just spend a lot of time sourcing you will you will have that picker store if you spend most of your time shopping i do find though that a lot of people who think they're great at shopping or maybe they are great at shopping they don't really shop that much their stores are like 300 items 200 items and they never get that velocity they're looking for because their stores are just a little bit too small you gotta get your store big enough so that you actually have things selling every single day and that's gonna keep the momentum going. But again, that's quite a quite a grind. I don't know very many professional pickers in my model that are that I know that don't source more than 20 hours a week or maybe they've got some fantastic connects at local auctions or they know people that might, but again, that takes years to develop and you have to spend time on relationships in that on that end, which is just as time consuming as, except for you put the effort up front and then reap the rewards later. So the picker model is fantastic. I recommend you guys do that forever. Again, I call it the golf of reselling. I'm sorry, the golf of occupations because you can resell in the picker model basically until you, until you can't lift a box. You can do that the rest of your life. And it gets easier as you get older because you have all that experience from your life, all that vintage stuff you had when you were growing up. So that's really special and really cool, that picker model, but again, if you guys want like a stable income and you want to be able to take a vacation once in a while, I recommend adding in a little bit of bulk purchasing, getting a few people to help you. There's really nothing wrong with that, but I hear a lot of people saying, I don't want anybody. I want to just do it myself. I don't trust anyone. Well, that just makes your life really challenging because you have to do everything by yourself and there's no glory in doing it by yourself. And you sort of owe it to your family, in my opinion, to at least examine having other people help you because otherwise you're just one of those people who never takes a vacation ever 
and that you just fall into the bucket of traditional small business owner, which means you're just married to your job. You know, if I, if I look at all the small business owners that I've known over the years, most of them are divorced just because they are never home. They go home to a house full of strangers. So just think about that. Is that sacrifice worth it just so that you can be a picker and do home run after home run, but you don't know your family? So make sure you do a little bit of balance, guys. Until next time, make progress daily.